the Avadhuta Gita of the Tatraya. Song of the Free Translated and annotated by Swami Ashokananda Published by Adyaksha Sri Ramakrishnamath Milapur Chennai 4 10th print May 2015 Forward. The Avadhuta Gita is a text of Vedanta representing extreme Advaita or non-dualism. It is ascribed to Dattatreya, Datta, son of Atri, who is looked upon as an incarnation of God. Unfortunately, we possess no historical data concerning when or where he was born, how long he lived, or how he arrived at the knowledge disclosed in the text. Some of the Puranas mention him, and of these, the Markandaya contains the longest reference. But even this is legendary and by no means very informative. The account in the Markandaya Purana suggests the following facts of Tathatraya's life. He was born of highly spiritual parents, Atri and Anushaya. Very early in life he became renowned as a great warrior, and soon, renouncing the world and devoting himself to the practice of yoga, he attained to the highest state of liberation, thus becoming an Avadhuta. Avadhuta means a liberated soul, one who has passed away from or shaken off all worldly attachments and cares, and has attained a spiritual state equivalent to the existence of God. Though Avadhuta naturally implies renunciation, it includes an additional and yet higher state, which is neither attachment nor detachment, but beyond both. An Avadhuta feels no need of observing any rules, either secular or religious. He seeks nothing, avoids nothing. He has neither knowledge nor ignorance. Having realized that he is the infinite self, he lives in that vivid realization. To the Hindu mind, Dattatreya is a symbol of this realization. Whoever the unknown composer of the Avadhuta Gita may have been, he must himself have been a man of the highest spiritual perception. The Avadhuta Gita is a small book of only eight chapters and is written in spirited Sanskrit verse which breathes the atmosphere of the highest experience of Brahman. It goes into no philosophical argument to prove the oneness of reality but is content to make the most startling statements, leaving the seeker of truth to imbibe them and be lifted from illusion into the blazing light of knowledge. Advaita Vedantins have praised this Gita highly. Swami Vivekananda, one of the greatest Advaitins of all, quoted from it. He once said, Men like the one who wrote this song keep religion alive. They have actually realized they care for nothing, feel nothing done to the body, care not for heat, cold, danger or anything. They sit still, enjoying the bliss of Atman, and though red-hot coals burn the body, they feel them not. The present English translation was first published in part in 1946 in The Voice of India, a magazine of the Vedanta Society of Northern California. The learned translator, Swami Ashokananda, a senior monk of the Ramakrishna order, served as editor of the Prabuddha Bharata, from 1926 to 1931 and was in charge of the Vedanta Society of Northern California from 1932 until his passing away in December of 1969. Avadhuta Gita Chapter 1 Through the grace of God alone the desire for non-duality arises in wise men to save them from great fear. How shall I salute the formless being, indivisible, auspicious and immutable, who fills all this with his self and also fills the self with his self? The universe composed of the five elements is like water in a mirage. Oh, to whom shall I make obeisance? I who am one and taintless. 
All is verily the absolute self. Distinction and non-distinction do not exist. How can I say it exists? It does not exist. I am filled with wonder. The essence and the whole of Vedanta is this knowledge, this supreme knowledge that I am by nature the formless, all-pervasive self. Thus you are one. Why then do you not understand that you are the unchangeable one, equally perceived in all? Almighty one, how can you, who are ever shining, unrestricted, think of day and night? Know the self always to be everywhere, one and uninterrupted. I am the meditator and the highest object of meditation. Why do you divide the indivisible? You are not born, nor do you die. At no time do you have a body. The scripture declares in many different ways the well-known dictum, all is Brahman. You are he who is exterior and interior. You are the auspicious one, existing everywhere at all times. Why are you running hither and thither deluded like an unclean spirit? Union and separation exist in regard neither to you nor to me. There is no you, no me, nor is there this universe. All is verily the self alone. You do not belong to that which is composed of the five objects of sense, such as sound, nor does that belong to you. You indeed are the supreme reality. Why then do you suffer? For you there is no birth or death. For you there is no mind. For you there is no bondage or liberation. No good or evil. Why do you shed tears, my child? Neither you nor I have name and form. O oh mind, why do you wander about deluded like an unclean spirit? Behold the self indivisible. Be happy through renunciation of attachment. You verily are truth, devoid of change, motionless, one, of the nature of freedom. You have neither attachment nor aversion. Why do you suffer seeking the objects of desires? All the scriptures say that the truth is without attributes, pure, immutable, bodiless, and existing equally everywhere. Know me to be that. There is not the least doubt about it. Know that which has form to be false, that which is formless to be eternal. Through the instruction of this truth, there is no longer rebirth into this world. Sages say that reality is one only and the same. And through renunciation of attachment, the mind, which is one and many, ceases to exist. If it is of the nature of the not-self, how can there be samadhi? If it is of the nature of the self, how can there be samadhi? If it is both is and is not, how can there be samadhi? If all is one and of the nature of freedom, how can there be samadhi? You are pure, homogeneous reality, disembodied, unborn and immutable. Why do you think of yourself as, I know it here, or as, I do not know? By such sentences as, that thou art, your own self is affirmed. Of that which is untrue and composed of the five elements, the Shruti says, not this, not this. As the self is filled by the self, so is all filled continuously by you. There is no meditator or meditation. Why does your mind meditate shamelessly? I do not know the Supreme. How shall I speak of Him? I do not know the Supreme. How shall I worship Him? If I am the Supreme One, 
who is the highest truth, who is homogeneous being and like unto space. How then shall I speak of him and worship him? The principle of ego is not the truth, which is homogeneous, which is free from the cause of superimposition and distinctions of perceived and perceiver. How can the ego be that which is aware of itself? There is no substance whatever which is by nature unlimited. There is no substance whatever which is of the nature of reality. The very self is the supreme truth. There is neither injury nor non-injury in it. You are the homogeneous reality. You are pure, bodiless, birthless and imperishable. Why then do you have any delusion about the self? Again, why am I myself deluded? When the pot is broken, the space within it is absorbed in the infinite space and becomes undifferentiated. When the mind becomes pure, I do not perceive any difference between the mind and the Supreme Being. There is no pot. There is no pot's interior space. Neither is there an individual soul, nor the form of an individual soul. Nor the absolute Brahman, devoid of knowable and knower. Know me to be that self who is everything and everywhere at all times, who is external, steady, the all, the non-existent and the existent. Have no doubt. There are no Vedas, no worlds, no gods, no sacrifices. There is certainly no caste, no stage in life, no family, no birth. There is neither the path of smoke nor the path of light. There is only the highest truth, the homogeneous Brahman. If you are free of the pervaded and pervader, if you are one and fulfilled, how can you think of yourself as directly perceptible by the senses or beyond the range of the senses? Some seek non-duality, others duality. They do not know the truth, which is the same at all times and everywhere, which is devoid of both duality and non-duality. How can they describe the truth, which is beyond mind and words, which is devoid of white and other colours, of sound and other qualities? When all these appear to you as false, when the body and so on appear to you like space, then you know Brahman truly. Then for you there is no dual series. Even my natural self appears to me as non-distinct from the Supreme Self. It appears to be one and like space. How can there be meditator and meditation? What I do, what I eat, what I sacrifice, what I give, all this is not mine in the least. I am pure, unborn, undecaying. Know all this universe to be formless. Know all this universe to be without change. Know all this universe to be of purified body. Know all this universe to be of the nature of the Absolute. You are verily the truth. There is no doubt about it. Otherwise, what do I know? Why do you consider the self, which is perceptible to itself, as imperceptible? My child, how can there be illusion and non-illusion, shadow and lack of shadow? All this is one truth. All this is of the nature of space and without taint. I am free in the beginning, in the middle and in the end. I am never bound. This is my sure knowledge, that I am naturally spotless and pure. The whole universe, beginning with the principle of cosmic intelligence, is not in the least manifest to me. 
All is indeed Brahman alone. How can there be any existence in caste or stage of life for me? I know that all, in every way, is the one indivisible I, which is self-sustained and full, while the five elements, beginning with ether, are empty. The self is neither eunuch, man, nor woman. It is neither idea nor imagination. How can you think the self to be full of joy or joyless? The self certainly does not become pure through the practice of six-limbed yoga. It certainly is not purified by the destruction of the mind. It certainly is not made pure by the instructions of the teacher. It is itself the truth. It is itself the illumined one. There is no body made up of five elements nor is there anybody who is disembodied. All is verily the self alone. How can there be the three states and the fourth? I am not bound. I am not indeed liberated. And I am not different from Brahman. Neither doer nor enjoyer. I am devoid of the distinctions of the pervaded and the pervader. As water when water has been poured into water, has no distinctions, so Purusha and Prakriti appear non-different to me. If indeed you are never bound or liberated, how then can you think yourself with form or as formless? I know your supreme form to be directly perceivable, like the sky. I know your lower form to be as water in a mirage. I have neither teacher nor instruction, limiting adjunct nor activity. Know that I am by nature pure, bodiless, like the sky. You are pure, you are without a body, your mind is not higher than the highest. You need not be ashamed to say, I am the self, the supreme truth. Why are you weeping, O oh mind? Do you, the self, be the self by means of the self? Drink, my child, the supreme nectar of non-duality, transcending all divisions. There is neither knowledge nor ignorance, nor knowledge combined with ignorance. He who has always such knowledge is himself knowledge. It is never otherwise. There is no need of knowledge, reasoning, time, space, instruction from a teacher, or attainment of samadhi. I am naturally the perfect consciousness, the real, like the sky, spontaneous and steady. I was not born, nor have I death. I have no action, good or evil. I am Brahman, stainless, without qualities. How can there be bondage or liberation for me? If God pervades all, if God is immovable, full, undivided, then I see no division. How can he have exterior or interior? The whole universe shines undivided and unbroken. Oh, the Maya, the great delusion the imagination of duality and non-duality. Always not this, not this, to both the formless and the formed. Only the Absolute exists, transcending difference and non-difference. You have no mother, no father, no wife, no son, no relative, no friend. You have no likes, or dislikes. Why is this anguish in your mind? O oh mind, for you there is no day or night, rising or setting. How can the wise imagine an embodied state for the bodiless? The self is neither divided nor undivided, nor has it sadness, happiness and the like, nor is it all or less than all. Know the self to be immutable. 
I am not the doer or enjoyer. Work have I none, now or formerly. I have no body, nor am I bodiless. How can I have or not have a sense of minus? I have no faults such as passion and the like, nor have I any sorrow arising from the body. Know me to be the one self, vast and like the sky. Friend mind, of what use is much vain talk? Friend mind, all this is mere conjuncture. I have told you that which is the essence. You are indeed the truth, like the sky. In whatever place yogis die, in whatever state, there they dissolve, as the space of a jar dissolves into the sky. Giving up the body in a holy place, or in the house of a kandala, the yogi, even if he has lost consciousness, becomes identified with the Absolute as soon as he is free of the body. The yogis consider duty in life, pursuit of wealth, enjoyment of love, liberation, and everything movable or immovable, such as man and so on, to be a mirage. This is my certain perception. I neither perform nor enjoy past action, future action, or present action. The Avadhuta alone, pure in evenness of feeling, abides happy in an empty dwelling place. Having renounced all, he moves about naked. He perceives the Absolute, the All, within himself. Where there are neither the three states of consciousness nor the fourth, there one attains the Absolute in the Self. How is it possible to be bound or free where there is neither virtue nor vice? The Avadhuta never knows any mantra in Vedic meter nor any tantra. This is the supreme utterance of the Avadhuta, purified by meditation and merged in the sameness of infinite being. There exists neither complete void nor voidlessness, neither truth nor untruth. The Avadhuta, having realized the truths of the scriptures, has uttered this spontaneously from his own nature. Avadhuta Gita, Chapter 2 Of the teacher, even if he be young, illiterate, or addicted to the enjoyment of sense objects, even if he be a servant or a householder, none of these should be considered. Does anyone shun a gem fallen in an impure place? In such a case one should not consider even the quality of scholarship, a worthy person should recognize only the essence. Does not a boat, though devoid of beauty and vermilion paint, nevertheless ferry passengers? The unmoving one, who without effort possesses all that is movable and immovable, is consciousness, naturally calm, like the sky. How can he, the one and all-pervading, who moves effortlessly all that is movable and immovable, be differentiated. To me, he is non-dual. I am verily supreme since I am the Absolute, more essential than all essences, since I am free from birth and death, calm and undifferentiated. Thus I, free from all components, am worshipped by the gods, but being full and perfect, I do not recognize any distinctions such as gods and the like. Ignorance does not create any doubt. What shall I do, being endowed with modifications of the mind? They arise and dissolve like bubbles in water. Thus am I ever pervading all existence beginning with cosmic intelligence, pervading soft, hard, sweet, and pungent substances. As pungency, coldness, or softness 
is non-different from water, so Prakriti is non-different from Purusha. Thus it appears to me. The Lord of all the universe is devoid of names. He is subtler than the subtlest, supreme. He is spotless, beyond the senses, mind and intellect. Where there is such a natural being, how can there be I? How can there be even you? How can there be the world? That which has been described as being like ether is indeed like ether. That is consciousness, blameless, omniscient and perfect. It does not move about on the earth or dwell in fire. It is not blown by the wind or covered by water. Space is pervaded by it, but it is not pervaded by anything. It is existing within and without. It is undivided and continuous. One should successively take recourse to the objects of concentration, as mentioned by the yogis, in accordance with their subtlety, invisibility and attributelessness. When through constant practice one's concentration becomes objectless, then, being divested of merits and demerits, one attains the state of complete dissolution in the Absolute through the dissolution of the object of concentration, but not before then. For the destruction of the terrible, poisonous universe which produces the unconsciousness of delusion, there is but one infallible remedy, the nectar of naturalness. That which has form is visible to the eye, while the formless is perceived mentally. That, the self, being beyond existence and non-existence, is called intermediate. The external existence is the universe. The inner existence is called Prakriti. One should try to know that which is more interior than the inner existence, that which is like water within the kernel of the coconut. Illusory knowledge relates to what is outside, correct knowledge to what is inside. Try to know that which is more interior than the inside, that which is like water within the kernel of the coconut. There is only one very clear moon on the full moon night. One should perceive that, the self, like the moon. Seeing duality is perversion. It is indeed in this way that intelligence becomes divided and ceases to be all comprehending. A giver attains to wisdom and is sung with millions of names. Whoever, whether he be ignorant or learned, attains to the full awareness of truth through the grace of a teacher's wisdom, becomes detached from the ocean of worldliness. He who is free from attachment and hatred, devoted to the good of all beings, fixed in knowledge and steady, shall attain to the supreme state. As the space within a pot dissolves in the universal space when the pot is broken, so a yogi, in the absence of the body, dissolves into the Supreme Self, which is his true being. It has been said that the destiny of those devoted to action is the same as their thought at the end. But it has not been said that the destiny of those established in yoga is the same as their thought at the end. One may express the destiny of those devoted to action with the organ of speech, but the destiny of the yogis can never be expressed because it is transcendental. Knowing this, one never says that the yogis have a particular path. For them it is the giving up of all duality. The supreme attainment comes of itself. The yogi, having died anywhere, in a holy place or in the house of an untouchable, does not see the mother's womb again. He is dissolved in the Supreme Brahman. He who has seen his true self, which is innate, unborn and incomprehensible, does not, if anything desired happens to him, become tainted. 
being free from taint, he never performs any action. The man of self-restraint, or the ascetic, therefore, is never bound. He attains to the Supreme Self, who is eternal, pure, fearless, formless and supportless, who is without body, without desire, beyond the pairs of opposites, free from illusion and of undiminished power. He attains to the Supreme Eternal Self, in whom exists no Veda, no initiation, no tonsure, no teacher, no disciple, no perfection of symbolic figures, no hand posture or anything else. He attains to the Supreme Eternal Self, in whom is neither Sambhavi, nor Shakti, nor Anavi initiation, neither a sphere, nor an image, nor a foot, nor anything else, neither beginning, nor ending, nor a jar, etc. He attains to the Supreme Eternal Self, from whose essence the universe of movable and immovable objects is born, in whom it rests, and into whom it dissolves, even as foam and bubbles are born of the transformation of water. He attains to the Supreme Eternal Self, in whom is no closing of nostril, nor gazing, nor posture, and in whom is neither knowledge, nor ignorance, nor any nerve current. He attains to the Supreme Eternal Self, who is devoid of manifoldness, oneness, many and oneness, and otherness, who is devoid of minuteness, length, largeness, and nothingness, who is devoid of knowledge, knowableness, and sameness. He attains the Supreme Eternal Self whether he has perfect self-control or not, whether he has withdrawn his senses well or not, whether he has gone beyond activity or is active. He attains the Supreme Eternal Self who is not mind, intelligence, body, senses or egoism, who is neither the subtle elements nor the five gross elements nor of the nature of space. When injunctions cease and the yogi attains to the Supreme Self, his mind being devoid of differentiations, he has neither purity nor impurity, his contemplation is without distinguishing attributes, and even what is usually prohibited is permissible to him. Where mind and speech can utter nothing, how can there be instruction by a teacher? To the teacher, ever united with Brahman, who has said these words, the homogeneous truth shines out. Abhadhuta Gita, Chapter 3 The distinction of quality and absence of quality does not exist in the least. How shall I worship Shiva, the Absolute, who is devoid of quality and absence of quality, who is devoid of attachment and detachment, who is of the form of ether, omniform, beyond illusion, and all-pervading. Shiva, the Absolute, is ever without white and other colours. This effect and cause are also the Supreme Shiva. I am thus the pure Shiva, devoid of all doubt. O oh, beloved friend, how shall I bow to my own self in myself? I am devoid of root and rootlessness, and am ever manifest. I am devoid of smoke and smokelessness, and am ever manifest. I am devoid of light and absence of light, and am ever manifest. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. How shall I speak of desirelessness and desire? How shall I speak of non-attachment and detachment? How shall I speak of him as devoid of substance and insubstantiality? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. How shall I speak of the whole, which is non-dual? How shall I speak of the whole, which is of the nature of duality? How shall I speak of the whole, which is eternal and non-eternal? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, 
like the sky. It is neither gross nor subtle. It has neither come nor gone. It is without beginning, middle and end. It is neither high nor low. I am truly declaring the highest truth and reality. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Know all instruments of perception to be like ethereal space. Know all objects of perception to be like ethereal space. Know this pure one as neither bound nor free. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. My child, I am not difficult to comprehend, nor am I hidden in consciousness. My child, I am not difficult to perceive, nor am I hidden in the perceptible. My child, I am not hidden in the forms immediately near me. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am the fire that burns the karma of one who is beyond all karma. I am the fire that burns the sorrow of one beyond all sorrow. I am the fire that burns the body of one who is devoid of body. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am the fire that burns the sins of one who is sinless. I am the fire that burns the attributes of one who is without attributes. I am the fire that burns the bondage of one who is without bondage. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. My child, I am not devoid of non-existence and existence. My child, I am not devoid of unity and absence of unity. My child, I am not devoid of mind and absence of mind. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. It is not my ignorance that the one beyond illusion seems to be posited in illusion. It is not my ignorance that the griefless one appears to be posited in grief. It is not my ignorance that the greedless one appears to be posited in greed. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. The creeper-like growth of worldly existence is never mine. The joy of extended contentment is never mine. This bondage of ignorance is never mine. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. The activity involved in the extension of relative existence is not a modification of myself. The gloom which is the expansion of grief is not a modification of myself. The tranquility which produces one's religious merit is not a modification of mine. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I have never any action which is the cause of regret and misery. Mine is never a mind which is the product of the experience of misery. Since this egoism never is mine, I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am the death of the movement of the unmoving one. I am neither decision nor indecision. I am the death of sleep and wakefulness. I am neither good nor evil, neither the moving nor the unmoving. I am the death of the substance of the insubstantial. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. This self is neither knowable nor the instrument of knowing. It is neither reason nor the one to be reasoned about. It is beyond the reach of words. It is neither mind nor intelligence. How then can I speak this truth to you? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. The supreme reality is devoid of the undivided and the divided. The supreme truth is in no way within or without. It is beyond causation. It is not attached nor is it any substance. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am verily the reality, 
free of such blemishes as attachment. I am verily the reality, free of such blemishes as destiny. I am verily the reality, free of the grease caused by transmigratory existence. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. If there are no three planes of existence, how can there be the fourth? If there are no three times, how can there be quarters? The supreme reality is the state of the highest serenity. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I have no such divisions as long or short. I have no such divisions as wide or narrow. I have no such divisions as angular or circular. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I never had a mother, father, son, or the like. I was never born, and never did I die. I never had a mind. The supreme reality is undistracted and calm. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am pure, very pure, beyond reason and of infinite form. I am non-attachment and attachment, beyond reason and of infinite form. I am undivided and divided, beyond reason and of infinite form. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. If the supreme reality is only one and stainless, how can there be here the hosts of gods beginning with Brahma? And how can there be here the worlds of habitation such as heaven? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. How shall I, the pure one, the not this, and yet the not, not this, speak? How shall I, the pure one, the endless and the end, speak? How shall I, the pure one, attributeless and attribute, speak? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I ever perform the supreme action which is non-action. I am the supreme joy, devoid of attachment and detachment. I am the everlasting joy, devoid of body and absence of body. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. The creation of the illusory universe is not my modification. The creation of deceit and arrogance is not my modification. The creation of truth and falsehood is not my modification. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am devoid of time, such as twilight. I have no disjunction. I am devoid of interiorness and awakening. I am neither deaf nor mute. I am thus devoid of illusion. I am not made pure by moods of mind. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I am without a master and the absence of a master. I am unperturbed. I have transcended mind and absence of mind. I am unperturbed. Know me as unperturbed and transcendent of all. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. How shall I say that this is a forest or a temple? How shall I say that this is proved or doubtful? It is thus one uninterrupted, homogeneous, calm existence. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. The self, devoid of life and lifelessness, shines forever. Devoid of seed and seedlessness, of liberation and bondage, it shines forever. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. It shines forever, devoid of birth mundane existence and death. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Thou hast no name and form even to the extent of illusion. 
nor any substance differentiated or undifferentiated. Why dost thou grieve, O thou of shameless mind? I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like a sky. Why weepest thou, friend? Thou hast no old age or death. Why weepest thou, friend? Thou hast no misery of birth. Why weepest thou, friend? There is no change for thee. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no natural form. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no deformity. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no age. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no age. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no mind. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no senses. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no lust. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no greed. Why dost thou weep, friend? Thou hast no delusion. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Why dost thou desire affluence? Thou hast no wealth. Why dost thou desire affluence? Thou hast no wife. Why dost thou desire affluence? Thou hast none who is thine own. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Birth in this universe of false appearances is neither thine nor mine. The shameless mind appears as differentiated. This, devoid of difference and non-difference, is neither mine nor thine. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. Thou hast not the nature of non-attachment in the slightest, nor hast thou in the slightest the nature of attachment. Thou hast not even the slightest in the nature of desire. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. In thy mind there is neither the meditator, meditation, nor the object of meditation. Thou hast no samadhi. There is no region outside thee, nor is there any substance or time. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. I have told thee all that is essential. There is neither thou, nor anything for me, or for a great one. Nor is there any teacher or disciple. The supreme reality is natural and exists in its own way. I am the nectar of knowledge, homogeneous existence, like the sky. If I, the Supreme, of the nature of sky, alone exist, how can there be here the Supreme Truth, which is blissful reality? How can there be here the Supreme Truth, which is not of the nature of bliss? And how can there be here the Supreme Truth of the nature of knowledge and intuition? Know the One who is consciousness and devoid of fire and air. Know the one of the nature of consciousness, who is devoid of earth and water. Know the one of the nature of consciousness, who is devoid of coming and going. I am neither of the nature of the void, nor of the nature of the non-void. I am neither of pure nature, nor of impure nature. I am neither form nor formlessness. I am the supreme reality of the form of its own nature. Renounce the world in every way. Renounce renunciation in every way. Renounce the poison of renunciation and non-renunciation. The self is pure, immortal, natural and immutable. Avadhuta Gita Chapter 4 There is neither invitation nor casting off. How can there be flowers, leaves, meditations, 
and recitation of sacred texts? And how can there be worship of Shiva, which is identity and difference? The Absolute is not liberated from bondage and obstruction. The Absolute is not purified, cleansed and released. The Absolute is not liberated by union or separation. I am indeed the free one, like the sky. I have developed no false notion that all this reality comes into existence or that all this unreality comes into existence. I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished, stained, stainless, divided, undivided, differentiated. None of these appear to me. I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. It has not happened that I, the ignorant one, have attained to knowledge, nor has it happened that I have become of the nature of knowledge. And how can I say that I have both ignorance and knowledge? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. It, the self, does not appear to me as virtuous or sinful, as bound or liberated, nor does it appear to me as united or separated. I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. I never have the high, low, or middle state. I have no friend or foe. How shall I speak of good and evil? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. I am not the worshipper or of the form of the worshipped. I have neither instruction nor practice. How shall I speak of myself who am of the nature of consciousness? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. There is nothing here which pervades or is pervaded. There is no abode, nor is there the abodeless. How shall I speak of void and non-void? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. There is no one to understand, and nothing indeed to be understood. I have no cause and no effect. How shall I say that I am conceivable or inconceivable? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. There is nothing dividing, nothing to be divided. I have nothing to know with and nothing to be known. How shall I then speak of coming and going, my child? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. I have no body or bodilessness. Nor have I intelligence, mind, and senses. How shall I speak of attachment and detachment? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. The self is not separate or high, and it has not disappeared even to the extent of illusion. Friend, how can I speak of it as identical or different? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Neither have I conquered the senses, nor have I not conquered them. Self-restraint or discipline never occurred to me. Friend, how shall I speak of victory and defeat? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Never have I form or absence of form. Never any beginning, middle or end. Friend, how shall I speak of strength and weakness? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Never, my child, did I have death or deathlessness, poison or poisonlessness. How shall I speak of the pure and the impure? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Never have I sleep or awakening. Never do I practice concentration or hand posture. For me there is neither day nor night. How shall I speak of the transcendental and relative states? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Know me as free from the all and from the details composing the all. 
I have neither illusion nor freedom from illusion. How shall I speak of such rituals as morning and evening devotions? I am free from disease, my form has been extinguished. Know me as endowed with all concentration. Know me as free from any relative or ultimate aim. How shall I speak of union and separation? I am free from disease, my form has been extinguished. I am neither ignorant nor learned. I observe neither silence nor absence of silence. How shall I speak of argument and counter-argument? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Neither do I have father, mother, family, caste, birth and death. How shall I speak of affection and infatuation? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Never do I disappear. I am ever manifest. Never do I have effulgence or absence of effulgence. How shall I speak of such rituals as morning and evening devotions? I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. Know me beyond all doubt to be boundless. Know me beyond all doubt to be undivided. Know me beyond all doubt to be stainless. I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. The wise, my child, give up all meditations. They give up all good and evil deeds and drink the nectar of renunciation. I am free from disease. My form has been extinguished. There is verily no versification where one knows nothing. The supreme and free one absorbed in the consciousness of the homogeneous being and pure of thought, prattles about the truth. Avadhuta Gita, Chapter 5 The word Aum is like the sky. It is not the discernment of the essence of high and low. How can there be enunciation of the point of the word Aum? which annuls the manifestation of the unmanifest. The Shrutis, such as that thou art, prove to thee thou art indeed that, devoid of adjuncts and the same in all. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? If thou art the identity in all, if thou art devoid of above and below, within and without, and of even the sense of unity, then why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no discrimination of rules and precepts. There is no cause or effect. That which is the identity in all is without words and the collocation of words. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no knowledge or ignorance and no practice of concentration. There is no space or absence of space and no practice of concentration. There is no time or absence of time and no practice of concentration. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no pot space or pot no individual body or individual. There is no distinction of cause and effect. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is only the state of freedom which is the all and undifferentiated, which is devoid of the distinction of short and long, of round and angular. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the one without void and absence of void, without purity and impurity, without the whole and the part. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no distinction of the different and non-different. There is no distinction of within, without, or junction of the two. It is the same in all. 
devoid of friend or foe. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? It is not of the nature of disciple or non-disciple, nor is it the discernment of the difference between the living and the non-living. There is only the state of freedom, the all, the undifferentiated. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? It is without form and formlessness. It is without difference and non-difference. It is without manifestation and evolution. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no bondage due to fetters of good and evil qualities. How shall I perform the actions related to death and life? There is only the pure, stainless being, the same in all. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the being devoid of existence and non-existence, of desire and desirelessness. Here verily is the highest consciousness, identical with freedom. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart. Here is the truth, undifferentiated by truths, devoid of junction and disjunction. Since it is the same in all and devoid of all, why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the supreme, devoid of association and dissociation, unlike a house, cottage or sheath. Here is the supreme devoid of knowledge and ignorance. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Change and changelessness, the definable and the indefinable, are untrue. If the truth is in the self alone, why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here verily is the conscious being who is completely the all. Here is the conscious being who is all comprehensive and undivided. Here is the conscious being, alone and immutable. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? It is ignorance to see difference in the undifferentiated. Doubt in what is beyond doubt is ignorance. If there is only the one undivided consciousness, then why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no state of liberation, no state of bondage, no state of virtue, no state of vice. There is no state of perfection and no state of destitution. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? If the homogeneous being is devoid of cause and effect, division and subdivision, colour and lack of colour, then why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? The self is here in the universal consciousness, which is the all and undivided. It is here in the universal consciousness, which is absolute and immovable. It is here in the universal consciousness, which is devoid of men and other beings. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? The self transcends all, is indivisible and all-pervading. It is free from stain of attachment, immovable and all-pervading. It is without day and night and all-pervading. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? There is no coming of bondage and freedom from bondage. There is no coming of union and separation. There is no coming of reasoning and disputation. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the negation of time, untime, 
and even the atom of fire, but no negation of the absolute truth. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the self devoid of body and disembodiment. Here verily is the Supreme One, devoid of dream and deep sleep. Here is the Supreme One, devoid of name and injunctions. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Pure, vast and homogeneous like the sky, the self is the same in all and devoid of all. It is the homogeneous being divested of essence, non-essence and change. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the self, which is more than dispassionate to virtue and vice, to substance and non-substance, to desire and desirelessness. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the self, the same in all, which is without grief and grieflessness. Here is the supreme, without happiness and sorrow. The supreme truth is devoid of teacher and disciple. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Verily there is no offshoot, essence or absence of essence. Neither is there the movable nor the immovable, sameness nor variety. The self is devoid of reason and unreason. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Here is the essence, the concentration of all essences, which is said to be different from one's individual consciousness. To be the instrument of the perception of objects is unreal. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Since the Vedas have declared variously that this universe made of ether and the like is like a mirage, and since the self is one, indivisible, and the same in all, why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Where one knows nothing, there is verily no versification. The Supreme and Free One, pure of thought, absorbed in the consciousness of the homogeneous being, prattles about the truth. Avadhuta Gita, Chapter 6 The Shrutis declare in various ways that all this, the ether and its like, and we ourselves are like a mirage. If there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be the comparable in the comparison? The Supreme is without divisibility and indivisibility. The Supreme is without activity and changeability. If there is only one indivisible, all comprehensive absolute, how can there be worship? How can there be austerity? The mind is verily supreme, undivided, all-pervasive, and devoid of largeness and smallness. The mind is indeed the indivisible, all-comprehensive, absolute. How can we do anything with the mind and speech? The self is the negation of the distinction between day and night. The self is the negation of the risen and not risen. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be the sun, the moon and fire? The self is that from which the distinctions of desire and desirelessness, of action and inaction are gone. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness differentiated by exterior and interior. If the self is devoid of essence and lack of essence, if it is without void and non-void, if there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be a first? How can there be a last? 
If the self is the negation of difference and non-difference, if it is the negation of knower and knowable, if there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be the third? How can there be the fourth? The spoken and the unspoken are not the truth. The known and the unknown are not the truth. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be objects, senses, mind and intellect? Ether and air are not the truth. Earth and fire are not the truth. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be cloud? How can there be water? If the self is the negation of imagined worlds, if it is the negation of imagined gods, if there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be discriminating consciousness of good and evil? The self is the negation of death and deathlessness. It is the negation of action and inaction. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can one speak of coming and going? No such distinctions exist as Prakriti and Purusha. There is no difference between cause and effect. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can one speak of self and not self? There is no coming of the third kind of misery or of the second kind of misery due to the gunas. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be an old man, a young man or an infant? The Supreme is without caste and stage of life, without cause and agent. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness of the destroyed and the undestroyed? The destroyed and the undestroyed are both false. The born and the unborn are both false. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be the perishable and the imperishable? The self is the annihilation of the masculine and the non-masculine. It is the annihilation of the feminine and the non-feminine. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness of joy and lack of joy? If the Supreme is free of delusion and sorrow, doubt and grief, if there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be I and mine? The Supreme is the destruction of virtue and vice. It is the destruction of bondage and freedom from bondage. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be here any consciousness of sorrow and absence of sorrow? No distinction of sacrificer and sacrifice exists. No distinction of fire and ingredients exists. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, say how there can be any fruits of work. The self is verily free from sorrow and absence of sorrow. The self is free from pride and absence of pride. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness of attachment and non-attachment? No such change as illusion and freedom from illusion exists. No such change as greed and freedom from greed exists. If there is only one indivisible, all-comprehensive absolute, how can there be consciousness of discrimination and lack of discrimination? There are never any you and I. The discrimination of family and race is false. I am indeed the absolute and the supreme truth. In that case, how can I make any salutation? The self is that in which the distinction of teacher and disciple disappears 
and in which the consideration of instruction also disappears. I am indeed the Absolute and the Supreme Truth. How can I, in that case, make any salutation? There is no imagined division of bodies. There is no imagined division of worlds. I am indeed the Absolute and the Supreme Truth. In that case, how can I make any salutation? The Self, never endowed with passion or devoid of it, is verily spotless, immovable and pure. I am indeed the Absolute and the Supreme Truth. In that case, how can I make any salutation? No distinction such as body and bodilessness exists, nor is it true that there is false action. I am indeed the Absolute and the Supreme Truth. In that case, how can I make any salutation? Where one knows nothing, there is verily no versification. The supreme and free one, pure of thought, absorbed in the consciousness of the homogeneous being, prattles about the truth. Avadhuta Gita, Chapter 7 The enlightened one, nude or clad in a patched garment made of rags gathered from roads, follows the path which is devoid of virtue and vice and stays in an empty abode, absorbed in the pure, stainless, homogeneous being. The enlightened one aims at that which is without mark or marklessness. He is skillful, being devoid of right and wrong. He is the absolute truth, stainless and pure. How can the liberated one engage in discussion and disputation? Free from entrapment in the snares of hope and devoid of purificatory ceremonies, the enlightened one is ever absorbed in the Absolute. Thus, having renounced all, he is the truth, pure and stainless. How can there be any discussion here of body and disembodiment, of attachment and detachment? Here is the truth itself in its spontaneous natural form pure, immovable like the sky. Where the truth is known, how can there be form or formlessness? Where there is the Supreme, whose form is like the sky, how is perception of any object possible? The Supreme Self is indivisible of the form of the sky. It is the truth, pure and stainless. Thus, how can there be here difference and non-difference, bondage and freedom from bondage, transformation and division? Here is only the absolute truth, indivisible and the all. How can there be here union, disunion or pride? If thus there is here only the supreme, indivisible and the all, how can there be here any substance or absence of substance? Here is the absolute truth, indivisible and pure, stainless in the all, of the form of the sky. Thus, how can there be here association and dissociation? How truly can there be here any play or cessation of play? The enlightened one is a yogi devoid of yoga and absence of yoga. He is an enjoyer devoid of enjoyment and absence of enjoyment. Thus he wanders leisurely, filled with the spontaneous joy of his own mind. If the yogi is always related to knowledge and perception, to duality and unity, how can he be free here? How can a yogi be natural and free from attachment here? He is the enjoyer of the pure, stainless and homogeneous being. The self is destruction, devoid of the destroyed and undestroyed. The self is the auspicious moment, devoid of the auspicious and inauspicious time. Thus how can there be here substance and absence of substance? 
the truth which is homogeneous is of the form of the sky forever divested of all and united to the self the enlightened one is the all free and devoid of truth thus how can there be here life and death and how can there be here any accomplishment through meditation or lack of meditation all this is magic like a mirage in the desert only the absolute self of indivisible and impenetrable form exists to all things from the practice of religious laws and duties to liberation we are completely indifferent how can we have anything to do with attachment or detachment only the learned imagine these things where one knows nothing there is verily no versification the supreme and free one pure of thought absorbed in the consciousness of the homogeneous being prattles about the truth Abhuta Gita chapter 8 by my making pilgrimage to thee thy all pervasiveness has been destroyed by me with my meditation thy transcendence of the mind has been destroyed by me thy transcendence of speech has been destroyed by me and my singing thy praise ever forgive me these three sins a sage is one whose intelligence is unsmitten by lusts who is self-controlled gentle and pure who possesses nothing who is indifferent who eats moderately is quiet and steady and who has taken refuge in me the sage is vigilant and resolute has a profound mind and has conquered the six bondages he is not proud but gives honor to others he is strong friendly to all compassionate and wise the sage is merciful non-violent and enduring of all he is pure-hearted and is the essence of truth he is the same to all and beneficent to all the sign of an avadhuta should be known by the blessed ones by those who know the truth of the significance of the letters of the vedas and who teach veda and vedanta the significance of the letter a is that the avadhuta is free from the bondage of hopes is pure in the beginning middle and end and dwells ever in joy the syllable va is indicative of him by whom all desires have been renounced whose speech is wholesome and who dwells in the present the syllable do is a sign of him whose limbs are gray with dust whose mind is purified who is free from all diseases and who is released from the practice of concentration and meditation the syllable ta is significant of him by whom the thought of truth has been made steady who is devoid of all thoughts and efforts and who is free from ignorance and egoism this gita or song is composed by datatriya avadhuta who is the embodiment of bliss Whoever reads or hear it has never any rebirth.